Welcome to day 224. We're in Jeremiah. And um, <clears throat> some uh, uh, different concepts to discuss today. Um, whether or not something is a future prophecy or whether they're talking about something that's going to happen at, in their time. So um, let's get at the beginning of this. So we're in uh, Jeremiah 24 to start today. Uh, you start on 23, but I'm going to start on 24. Bad figs and good figs. Uh, one basket with bad figs, one basket with good figs. And uh, the good figs are the people of Israel that have been exiled already, and God's, they, God's going to use them and bring them back for good things. The bad figs are the, are the, the rotten figs of the people of, Israel, of Judah that are left in Jerusalem. Um, and he's going to uh, destroy them. Uh, so that's verses 1 through 8. Um, and I want to mention war, famine, and disease. 24.10 And I will send war, fam and war, famine, and disease until they have vanished from the land of Israel, which I gave them and their ancestors. So he's getting, he is going to punish and get rid of the rottenness that's left. Now I want to paint a picture here. All this time he's worked hard on trying to get Israel to turn, all of Israel, to turn back to him. And time is the issue here. All of this time, all the time from the beginning to the flood, trying uh, to get uh, people to know him. And people just pushing away. And he sends the flood and destroys everybody except for Noah. And through Noah and all the way down to the new Israel, peep, Israel, all of Israel. And he dwindles that down into just the bad people that are left. Okay? So the time is the important part. Because when we get to the thousand year reign of Christ, people say, why did God bind Satan for a thousand years and then let him loose again? Well... All the way up through the church age to the tribulation at the rapture. The tribulation time is seven years where the Antichrist rules. That's the people left behind. And the very people left behind, there will be a choice to be made. Just like in Jerusalem now, it's all dwindled down to Jerusalem. And there was a choice to be made. Good figs and bad figs. And the good figs. Really, they were they had still rebelled against God, but they were exiled, and God was saving them. They're the remnant of Israel, and the bad figs are left over, and he's going to get rid of them. So in tribulation, that happens, and the bad people are annihilated. There's still some people left behind, and ushers in the thousand-year reign. And then the thousand-year reign, at the end, he lets Satan loose again to pull uh, good people and bad people apart. Uh, separate them, not pull them apart, but separate them. The time is the issue here. Giving people the time to make that decision. That's crazy, but that's love. And it's awful painful to watch. And uh, so that's happened throughout all of history and it's going to happen again. So that's that picture of, of why Satan, okay, my answer part of your questions. Fortune tellers on your list. Fortune tellers are listed 29, 8. So go to chapter 29, uh, verse 8. It says, this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, uh, the God of Israel, says. Do not let your prophets or, and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. So again, fortune tellers getting a bad rap. That's right, because God did not send them. Don't go to them. Don't bother listening to them. Not that they don't exist. Not that they don't have some special gift that... Uh, Satan has given them, or even maybe they know something, or maybe they're just tricking you in general. God did not send them. Stop listening to them. Don't go to them. Now, we have a 70-year reference again. I thought it was only mentioned like one time, but as I start making my list, I start to find out this is like the third or fourth time the 70 years has been mentioned. So, uh, this is chapter 29, verse 10. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years. Okay, stop right there. Remember, we've already read ahead and discussed that there's 430 years of exile that they're going to go through. 70 years, take that off, that's 360 years left. Multiply that by 7 times over and you get 2,500 years when they finally get to come back to the land, May 15th, 1948. So, the 70 years, God's 
God doesn't say why it's 70 years. He just says 70 years because God doesn't live in the past, present, and future. He lives in all three. So he already knows. He's, he's like, I'm going to send you in exile. It's going to be for 70 years. Um, but what I'm telling you is your exile is going to be 430 years. And, you know, and that's hard to understand. People read that and it's like, well, I don't get this. What is it? Well, God doesn't live in one moment. So he already knows it's going to be 70 years. So think about this as another part of today's concepts. Think about God looking at the world instead of your own little corner of the earth. You need to look at this from God's point of view and that in his time, meaning all time. So it is a conversation that God knows everything. He knows your motives, he knows your thoughts, and he knows the future, and he knows the past. So he speaks from that direction sometimes, okay? So you'll be in Babylon for 70 years. So I was just going to mark, making you aware that that's a 70-year reference again. And it says, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for a disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Okay, in those days you you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me, I will be found. These are the ifs, okay? I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and bring you home again to your own land. Now the concept. How do we know this is for right then, 70 years from that point that Jeremiah is talking, or is it in the future? Because we do have a lot of future things that I think are in here. And you have to look at this from a conversation that God's having that over the whole scope of time. Okay? So this, I believe, God is saying, yes, I am going to bring you back. I'm going to talk, bring a remnant back after the 70 years. Nehemiah, after Esther, and Artaxerxes, King Artaxerxes, and, and whatever, his grandson, and, and Nehemiah, then the prophet, and he sends Nehemiah back because he's sad, blah, 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 blah. But not everybody wants to come back, and he knows, okay, so that's the 70 years. I'm going to exile you seven times over for all of this. So he's talking about, at that time, I will bring some of you back and restore some of your fortune. Not some, but the point is, how to, this part is for Jeremiah. And you keep reading, and then all of a sudden, some key words come out that we need to understand that really can't be during that time. Um, so let's go to chapter 30, uh, verse 7 to 11. And, um, so again, I, I don't want to read the whole thing, is it? but some key things I want to point out. In all history, there has never been such a time of terror. I'm sorry, that's the tribulation time. In all of history, God speaking in all of history, there's never been such a time of terror. That is the tribulation. It will be a time of trouble for my people Israel. Yeah. Not that it wasn't in the 1940s, okay? Yet in the end, they will be saved. For in that day, in the end, this is, this is all key words. For in that day, that says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will break the yoke from their necks and snap their chains. For owners will no longer be their masters. For my people will serve the Lord their God and their king, descended from David. And the king will raise, uh, I will raise up for them. So that's, you know, talking about Jesus. So do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, Israel, says the Lord. For I will bring you home again from distant lands and your children. It doesn't say from Babylon. From distant lands, plural. And your children will return from your exile. Israel will return to a life of peace. So May 15, 1948 is where they got their land back in one day. All of Israel has not returned yet. Half, about half have returned. Okay. And then the, when the tribulation time begins, there's still going to be some oppression. I mean, there's anti-Semitic views out there right now. Okay? So this is talking about either uh, at the end, at the second coming, or the thousand year reign. So in, on my list of timeline during that time, there's certain verses that I put at either the second coming or I put at the thousand year reign. And uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep going with that. Um, all right. I will completely destroy the nations where I have scattered you. Well, what's that? Well, that's definitely the second coming. Um, chapter 30, verses 18 through 22. This is what the Lord says. When I bring Israel home again from captivity and restore their fortunes, okay? He hasn't done that yet. He's bringing them home, but they will all come home at the second coming. Okay, Jerusalem will be rebuilt on its ruins and the palace reconstructed as before. There will be joy and songs of thanksgiving. I will multiply my people, not diminish them. I will honor them, not despise them. 
Okay. Um, they will have their own ruler again. He will come from their own people. I will invite him to approach me, says the Lord, for who dare, who would dare to come unless invited? Okay, so he's talking about Christ. Christ will come to the Lord. Because who else dares to go to the Lord unless they're invited? Go to God. Okay, so now I have um, verses, uh, chapter 31, verse 8 and 9. For I will bring them from the north and from the distant corners of the earth. I will not forget the blind and lame, the expectant mothers and the women in labor. A great company will return. Tears of joy will stream down their faces, and I will lead them home with great care. They will walk beside quiet streams on, and on smooth paths where they will not stumble. For I am Israel's father, and Ephraim is my oldest child. And then we go on, and I think this next part is the during the thousand year reign. What will it be like? Um, verses 11 through 14. For the Lord has redeemed Israel from those too strong for them. They will come home and sing songs of joy on the heights of Jerusalem. They will be radiant because of the Lord's good gifts, the abundant crops of grain, new wine, and olive oil, and the healthy flocks and herds. Okay, so in Israel, this is going to be a great time. Their life will be a, like a watered garden, and all their sorrows will be gone. All their sorrows. All their sorrows are not gone yet. Okay? The young women will dance for joy, and the, and the men, old and young, will join in the celebration. So there will be old and young men during the thousand-year reign. We're not talking about the new heaven and new, the new heaven and new earth, okay? Um, I'll comfort them and exchange their sorrow for rejoicing. The priest will enjoy abundance, and my people will feast on the good things. So there will be priests. Um, so this is going needs to be uh, in the thousand-year reign. All right. So that is your day 224. I'll see you tomorrow.